All right, so this is the last section that we're going to cover before we test over chapter six. So this one is pretty short and sweet and pretty easy. So we are going to talk about, oops, we're going to talk about triangle inequalities. So remember inequalities is your greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. So we're going to look at those. So what is the comparison between sides and angles? So what we're going to start out with is the length of a side corresponds with the size of the angle it is across from. So think about if you have this triangle right here. So we'll draw angle A, B, and C. So if I have this triangle, and let's say this angle is 30, let's say this angle is 80, so that is 110, so that makes this angle 70. So the way you decide when I say you're going to determine um, what's happening between angles and sides by comparing. So the shortest side of your triangle. So if you look at this, um, just looking at this particular one, um, I kind of try to make this one obvious, but normally you don't judge by the way it looks. But this side right here is the shortest side because it is across from the smallest angle. So the shortest side will be across from the smallest angle. Now the next one I always go to right away is <clears throat> I jump straight to the longest side. So as I'm looking at this, this side over here is my longest side because it is across from the largest angle. So then I go down here. So once you've identified the smallest and the largest, well, then your middle side or your medium size will be across from the middle angle, okay? So if you are here, so this would be the smallest side, this would be your largest side, and this would be your medium side, okay? So let's look at what that looks like with some practice. So it says list the given angles. So they want me to list the angles from smallest so largest. So identify your sides. Which number is the smallest? Since this is the smallest, which is the largest? This would be the largest, so this makes this the middle side. So when you, lift, when you list your angles, because they want you to give me the angles, don't give me the sides here, because I can tell what the sides are by looking. I want to know what you think the angles are. Well, since 6 is the smallest number, then I'm going to look at the angle that's across. So angle C will be my smallest angle. And since 10 is my largest number, then angle B is my largest side. So that means that since 8 is in the middle, then this, angle A, is my middle angle. So I always identify the smallest and the largest, and what's left over goes in the middle. <clears throat> okay, so now we're looking over here, and I See, I have 11, 14, and 16, so this is the largest, and 11 is the smallest, meaning 14 is the middle. So if I'm going to list the smallest angle, I look at the smallest side, so across is H. 16 is the largest, so G is the largest, which means that J is what's left over, so J goes in the middle. All right, and it works the same way in reverse. Now, if I only give you two angles, then you are going to have to use the rule that there's 180 degrees here. So you're going to need to add the 60 plus 54, so that would be 114, and then you're going to have to subtract that from 180. So if I subtract that from 180, I should get 66, but let me double check. Yes, 66. So that means this angle is 66, because you don't know what's the smallest or the largest if you only have two, because you have to compare all three. So now, since this is my largest angle, this is my largest side. So they want me to list, so the direction said, um, list all the given angles. Where did my directions go? So we're going to go smallest to largest here as well. So um, since this is the largest angle, this is my largest side. Since 54 is my smallest angle. This is my smallest side. So this side is the middle. So I will put it in the middle. 
So the smallest side is R S. So it's going to be this whole side. Don't just give me one letter because that's a point. You have to give me both letters. The side starts at R, the side ends at S. The largest side is S to T. So the side that's left over is R to T. So make sure when you're listing your side, you are listing the ends of the side. Okay, so beginning to end. Now, this one, I don't know either angle. All I know is this is 90. Well, what I remember is that there's 180 degrees and a triangle. And if this is 90, that means these two angles have to add up to 90. So 2x plus 1 plus 2x plus 9 equals 90. I'm going to find x and plug it in so I can actually figure out which one of these is the smallest. I know the hypotenuse is the largest side. I just need to figure out which one is the smallest. So I've got 4x plus 10 equals 90. And I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. 4x equals 80. And then divide both sides by 4. x is 20. All right, so if x is 20, that means 2 times 20 is 40 plus 1, so that's 41. So this angle is 41 degrees. So that means this one is 2 times 20, which is still 40, plus 9. So this angle is 49. All right, so now I know that 41 is the smallest angle, so this is my smallest side. And 49 is the middle, so this is my middle, my middle side. So the smallest side is start to finish, so that would be BC. The largest side is AB. And my middle side is AC. So super duper easy. Just find your missing angle and then label small, medium, and large. All right, now, all year, every time I gave you a set of numbers and we said, assume this is a triangle, assume this is a triangle, well, not every set of numbers is always going to add up to be a triangle. So for example, if you have a triangle that has sides two, four, and five, these will make a triangle. So they have used these little construction marks. So someone's actually used them. And then you've got two, two, and five. Notice that the twos aren't long enough to close, to meet. And then we've got two, three, and five. Again, they're just not enough to close the triangle. And the triangle has to be closed or else it's not a triangle. So think about the sides of small, medium, and large, and um, or A, B, and C. Okay, so the way it works is you have to have a, a rule that says these three numbers will work. And if they don't meet this specification, they will not. So for example, the sum, so that means you're going to be adding. So you're going to add the lengths of any two sides. Okay. Their answer has to be greater than the side that's left over. So if you add the small and the medium side, they have to be greater than the large side. If you add the medium and the large side, they have to be bigger than the small side, which, I mean, come on, if the medium, the medium side's already bigger, so you know that one's gonna work. And then the small and the large have to be greater than the medium side. So, is it possible to construct a triangle with these following sides? Well, we know that if I add the medium and the large, it is going to be bigger than the small because the medium is already bigger. So you don't really have to check that one. The small and the large. Well, the large is already bigger than the medium. Now, the small and the medium. This is the only one you really, really, really have to check. So if you choose the, the small and the medium side, so 3 and 12 are the small and the medium. So if I were to add 3 plus 12, I get 15. Since 15 is less than 17, this is not a triangle. Okay, 
this has to be bigger than this. So this is not a triangle. Okay, if you go over here, you got 5 is the smallest and 16 is the medium. So 5 plus 16 is 21. 21 is equal to 21, so this is not a triangle. So this one doesn't work either. All right, now go over here and try it. Now we got the smallest and the medium. So 4 plus 7 equals 11. 11 is greater than 9. Check. This is a triangle. Okay, so this one will work. So the rule is add the small and the medium side. If it is greater than the biggest side, then it is a triangle. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay, if you were to add the medium and the large, if you added these two together, well, obviously, 37 is bigger than 5. So that would look like it was a triangle. So then if you added the small and the large, so that would be 26 is bigger than 16. But 21 was already bigger than 16. So of course, adding anything to it is going to be bigger. So make sure that you're checking this one most definitely. All right. All right. So now if a triangle has a side length of 5 and 13, what is the range of possible lengths for the third side? So this time the range, that means your answer is going to be in the form of something is less than X and X is less than something else. So the numbers have to fall between two numbers. So that means anything between them will work. Otherwise it will not. So this is the easiest one. Okay. So all you're going to do is take these two numbers and you're going to subtract them. So five, I'm sorry, 13 minus five is eight. And then you're going to add them. 13 plus five is 18. So that means X can be anywhere between eight and 18. Anywhere between eight and 18. So if you check, it cannot be eight. Eight will not work. 18 will not work but anything between, all right? So if I chose 12, well, five and 12 is 17, and 17 is bigger than 13, so that would work. But if I chose 18, since five plus three is 18, and right here it cannot be equal, then that would not work. So you have to follow the rule, all right? So your answer will be eight has to be less than X, or X has to be greater than 8, but X has to be less than 18. All right, so that would be the range that your answer has to fall in. All right, the last one is called the hinge theorem. It says if two triangles have two pairs of congruent sides, so like this side is equal to this side, and this side is equal to this side, then the relationship between the included angles is the same relationship as the sides. So for example, since 88 is bigger than 35, then this side right here is greater than this side right here. All right, so we're just gonna go through and I'm gonna show you all the easiest way to do this. Um, let me make this a little bit thinner. All right, so I just compare numbers. So I want to compare BC to EF. So I want to compare BC to EF. Well, BC is across from 35, so I'm going to write a 35 there. And EF is across from 45, so I'm going to write a 45 underneath EF. Since 35 is less than, then that means BC is also less than EF. So all you got to do is compare the numbers that are opposite. And whatever they are, if they're greater, then it's greater. So let's look at this one, BC. So BC is this side right here. It is across from 95. So I'm gonna put a 95 right here. EF is across from 20. So I'm gonna put a 20. Since 95 is greater than 20, that means BC is greater than EF. And that's all you gotta do, just compare those numbers. Angle A and angle D. Well, angle A is across from 14. Angle D is across from 16. Since 14 is less than 16, angle A is 
less than angle D. All right, this angle A. So this angle A is across from the side that has three tick marks, and angle D is across from the side that has three tick marks. So since they're both across the side that has the same tick marks, then that means they are equal to each other. So angle A is the same measure as angle D. So next class, we have a chapter six test. So make sure that you've looked over everything and that you are ready and prepared. See you guys next time. Bye.